to another uh, cute session for teams, champions using teams effectively. And uh, we're here to, if you're new, first time, you're, we're here to take your questions. This is an open office hour. It's a ask me anything. I don't know what the best uh, label for this. AMA, people like that, ask me anything. Office hours, we're, I guess we're all of that. <laughs> So come here and ask your questions, you know, and at least for 30 minutes, you, you got me and Stacy <clears throat> and sometimes Nash. I don't think he can make it uh, today, but uh, you got a bunch of teams geeks ready to geek out with you on some team stuff. So um, if you do have any questions, you can throw them in chat or you can um, come off mute and uh, we can talk about it. So, uh, yeah, we can just dive right into this thing. Anybody come with a burning question today? Probably the world of teams for everyone is just lovely and life is good. Get it. <laughs> hey, what about the attendance report? Any idea when that's coming? Um, I know for our larger meetings, people are having some issues, you know, with the current version. So just kind of curious if you know if that's more sooner than later. So Stacy, I went make so. Maybe you know uh, the update because my thought was so certainly the attendance report is in commercial. I think you're asking specifically about government. Um, and then there's the two flavors, whether you can uh, get the attendance report during a meeting. But if you don't do it before the meeting's over, then you lose the chance. And then the future feature of it being available even after the meeting. And so uh, last time I looked at this, I thought that it was in GCC has to be enabled by a PowerShell script. Stacey, have you heard differently? You're on mute, Stacey. Yeah. yeah. Oh, went back on mute. Might, might have a technical difficulty there. But it sounds like you're saying you don't see um, uh, the attendance download feature at all on your Not account. that new tab. Oh, I mean, we've got the, the old one, but we're just waiting for that tab to show up in our meetings. OK, yeah, and that was required. Uh, it was initial, initially enabled using PowerShell. Ricardo, you're exactly right. Um, so the IT admin would have had to take that move to even make it available during the meeting for download by the organizer. Uh, and we are waiting for a couple of enhancements. One um, is that it's available even after the meeting and two that you will have an attendance dashboard which i think is what you're referring to when you're talking about having that tab associated yeah. with your meetings um, i am doing a quick comb through we did get an update yesterday internally that looks like there are there's progress being made there's some testing underway and we look for that um, to be arriving I want to say November, but I'll confirm that and, and we'll update you a little bit better. Probably by next week, we'll have a more firm release time on that. Thank you. We've been saying fourth quarter, so <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that all lines up. Thanks so much. Sure. Uh, one other thing I wanted to share, Ricardo, before um, we talk about perhaps any other topic today is that our Microsoft Accessibility blog was updated yesterday and it has a government section where it talks about features in Teams meetings that are live and contribute to the accessibility of a meeting. I just um, came across that blog post yesterday, so I want to be able, I want to be sure to share that in this forum and anyone who's keen on those accessibility topics, by all means, read through uh, what we publicized yesterday in the blog post here, and I'm putting that in the chat right now. I have a really dumb question, and I'm hoping you might have some insight to it. I've had a ticket open with Microsoft now, probably since this feature was released. Presenter mode does not show up on my computer when I share. And I'm really wondering um, what might be behind the, the root cause behind that, whether it's a registry setting or something else, but we've uninstalled, reinstalled numerous times. And no matter what, presenter mode does not show. And by that you mean the um, 
like the new presenter modes, like right. When side. you go to share content, you have the new four buttons that say presenter mode. Mm -hmm. I wonder I would that could that be related to like the office version or something? Everybody oh. else in the office has it. We're talking okay. eighteen thousand people. Hmm. Everyone except a few, a couple of individuals, you mean? Uh, only uh, one person has reported it, and it's myself, and I'm a team's admin, luckily. Oh, uh, okay. But uh, I need to get behind what's going on, because I am sure others, once they start realizing this feature is out there, they are going to start reporting it as an issue. Yeah, my first thought was going to be, you know, is the <clears throat> rollout 100% across all tenants and maybe your tenant hasn't fully gotten it yet? Uh, rollout is 100%. Okay. I have the most up-to-date uh, Teams version. Mm -hmm. That would have been have. my next question. So it's just the great big mystery. Yeah, that that's uh, the ticket is, is the route for that. Um, just check on your your particular uh, instance. So is engineering engaged already on that ticket for you? Uh, the product group and engineering is already engaged, but they're okay. scratching their heads and every couple of weeks they ask me for logs and that's about it. Hmm. OK, so I'm, I'm chasing my tail. I wonder if we can. Um, Lori, I'm going to take your contact information. It may be something that from um, my side I can, I don't, I don't know, but <laughs> I will certainly dig around and see and engage with you to, to make, get some movement on that engineering front because it does sound very individual, unfortunately, mm -hmm. um, which I'm sure those logs are providing some information for them. So again I'll, I'll take your information down and reach out and see if i can do something else internally to support movement on that great do you want the case number um sure yeah go ahead you want to want to put that in chat um yep. that way you won't have to worry about it on the recording okay. and whatnot <laughs> oh, of yeah. course of course thank you thank you good call <laughs> So I did see Jim's question in the chat about um, suggestions uh, for conducting hybrid meetings, <clears throat> participants gathered in physical room uh, versus connected virtually. Um, that's kind of a timely question for me because I was j just in a conversation with someone about that, about the the culture shifts that, uh, that I feel like need to happen as we, you know, kind of go try to go back to uh, you know, normal, whatever that is. Um, but uh, we certainly publish a lot of uh, content, um, we Microsoft on, um, you know, hybrid work and whatnot. I, I don't know if I, we could find blog posts here uh, quickly. But um, I will just say off the top of my head, the thing that I was in a conversation with someone about on that topic of the hybrid meeting is just this idea that of of trying to make sure that your virtual participants are not uh, like uh, second class citizens in that meeting, right? That if, if, if uh, there's a, a part of the folks that are in the room, it can be easy to for that audience with their easy ability to kind of, you know, look at each other and have side conversations and and even speak quietly and, you know, maybe you can't pick it up on the microphone, and those kind of things you don't that's that's what you don't want to happen, right? You want it to be it as close to possible as if those remote folks were there in the meeting as well. I know one of the things we <clears throat> had announced recently, um, uh, I forget uh, what event it was or whatever, but you know, we from our team's meetings rooms perspective, you know, we've got technology that we're, you know, putting out there to try to make those remote participants, uh, especially if you've got the, you know, the, the room with the big screens and all that good stuff to, to have them, their video content right there uh, front and center. Um, can't be ignored in terms of the people in the room because they, you know, you can see them very easily. The other little kind of culture shift uh, tip really too is that even when you are in these 
fancy, uh, in my words, fancy rooms with cameras that are, you know, looking at the person speaking and zooming in and whatnot. I mean, you still have this concept of, you know, remote participants seeing the whole room, which uh, could be good or bad, depending on what that, you know, end users wants to see. But to help with all of that, to have each individual still have their laptop on in front of them with camera on right to get the same kind of engagement that the remote users are having so remote user now has the option to either look at the room feed and its fancy camera that's trying to focus or to look at the individuals like they would if everybody was remote and of course that also lets those people in the meeting continue to engage with the other things going on in the meeting like the chat like reactions things like that so even that's even more especially true if you don't have a you know a big uh teams meeting room with all the bells and whistles um because those rooms would show you know reactions up on the big screen and all that good stuff but if you can have your laptop on and and, and see all of that engagement there and engage the same way too right because you don't, what you don't want is to be in that meeting room and not even have be able to hit that applause button for your something that your remote participant said you know you want to be able to have all of those engagements so this idea that we'll we'll want to have our laptops, even if I'm in the room, <clears throat> we'll want to have our laptops there on, cameras on, and get the same engagement. So the key there is just to uh, you know make sure that our remote folks are just as engaged as the uh, on-prem folks. Any I, anybody? Go ahead. I, I agree with everything that you just said, and, and that concept works great in theory the reality is the the bandwidth in the room and the number of participants it isn't there to support everybody being able to log in simultaneously hmm. so what is happening is almost the opposite of what you described if somebody's at home or working remotely virtually connected into the meeting they're getting a much better experience than the people who have been asked to come to the room hmm. to participate um, they don't have the ability to use the emojis because they don't have their laptop there and they wouldn't be able to connect anyway if they did. Mm. Um, it would probably slow down the whole thing. The other problem um, that we're about to face uh, next two weeks from now is we want to be able to have members of leadership participate from any of our four locations and be able to speak to the people in the room, but anybody else in any of the other rooms connected virtually would be able to he hear and see that person speaking. So the presenters then faced with an issue of if you're in front of the crowd and the one camera connected to the meeting is panned out over the crowd, then it they have their back to the people virtually. So I'm wondering, is there the capability of switching between two different cameras in a Teams meeting, in a live event, there probably would have been a much better thing because you have somebody in a production capacity that what that would do that. But did I give you enough to to think about there? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, I was trying to envision the that last scenario you were talking about, but um, and so first I'll say. Nash couldn't make it today, but he would have been perfect for that question. And and if nothing else, uh, we'll we'll forward it to him and uh, maybe get some feedback for next week, because I'm probably about to butcher what, I, what I'm about to say. Because um, I think that there are is technology that's either soon coming or certainly on the roadmap related to managing uh, feeds and basically making it easier. Uh, to, you know, produce those kind of events like what you described, um, you know, with multiple cameras and that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, he could probably he could speak on that and I'll, I'll get his thoughts on that. Um, but beyond that, um, I mean, you kind of mentioned a speaker in front of an audience. And uh, the challenge is there. Yeah, it almost. Yeah, the, I think it, that's a that's a the challenge of the the cameras and and the mics and and that kind of thing. I all I all I can say without totally butchering it is that I you know those are scenarios that they're working on that you know might be here sooner than, even than I than I think. I know that I know that there's e effort there 
to help the whole production quality aspect of Teams meetings, which these days, a meeting versus a live event, you know, there's a that line blurs more and more every day as we bring more technology into the the, the typical team meeting. So I think that will get better. Um, yeah, I, I'll echo that, Ricardo. <clears throat> I just added a new message center post slide into the deck for uh, a couple of hardware devices enhancements that are going to bring um, video flexibility and streaming flexibility into the team's meetings. Uh, it's it's hardware that I'm not necessarily familiar with. It's the AGA and Black Magic hardware devices and flexibility with those. Those are going to have um, some some new integrations into Teams meetings that are going to allow you know the production level of this sort of thing to go through the roof and to be uh, extremely nimble. Now I will say, if you wanted to hit an easy button, Jim, in these situations, like I have my Surface Pro on my desk, it has the the um, the camera on the front and on the the rear. Uh, I also have a USB camera hooked up today. I can absolutely go up to the camera in my devices in the Teams meetings and switch that so that it would broadcast instead of my, um, my camera perhaps looking at me while I'm talking. If I was in a room with an audience and I wanted to show everyone else in the Teams call the audience, then I could just switch to the rear camera and and then switch back and keep talking. Now, obviously, I know when you have leaders who are trying to um, relay important messages, them toggling across and switching their cameras is probably not likely, but it's something that um, with a fairly basic laptop, if you needed to do that in a meeting that, that you're running, uh, it's it's certainly possible and it's going to be even more possible with more bells and whistles soon. Yeah, that device drop down for cameras, you know, certainly is more than just, you know, one or two. It's I think I've got four in my drop down right right now. Right. But right. yeah, the, the challenge might be length of cables and that kind of thing. If you've got some camera way over there for the crowd versus the speaker, you know, but but to your point, Stacey, technically it, it could do that today if, uh, with the right setup. OK, that's helpful. Thank you. Uh, I had seen somebody use their phone on a tripod. Mm. Would that be advisable or is that really contingent upon the Wi-Fi in the room? I, I think that could be viable, especially if the room's network is bad, but the phone's data is good. I mean, I, that could certainly be viable. That's a, a, it's certainly a viable piece for field for, uh, you know, things that are happening out in the field for sure. But yeah, that that's a Teams device with a camera, just like, you know, anything else. Um, so yeah, if that if, if that works and and and, now, and those phones got great cameras on them, probably many of them outmatch the ones on the on the uh, laptop. So yeah, I could see that as a viable option as well. OK, yeah, the, the end result of this is that there's a whole lot of sit and listen and there just is not a whole lot of interaction. So in some places they they can't even bring a phone into the room with them never mind uh, a laptop so being able to get those people somehow more actively engaged is is um something keeping me up at night yeah and i was going to ask you with it with that network problem if video is off is it is it better i mean people are all able to connect to the meeting right some some of our bandwidth issues in the building um, even when there's nobody on Teams, there are issues. So when oh, you start okay. to have people um, congregate in a certain area and then all log into the meeting, it just slows everything down. Yeah, because back to my point of uh, in my little scenario about keeping your laptop in front of you with cameras on. And cameras on is, is great, but if that wasn't possible, at least there's still a ton of engagement outside of being able to see the face that you, you still want you know, the the reactions, the chat and so forth. So um, hope you don't throw everything out because if the video isn't working, you still have some opportunity there. And and uh, Nash, I don't know, you know, put you on the spot because you jumped in. We we're talking about your kind of topic, which is the 
Oh, and I need to I need to uh, change your settings here, but uh, the cameras and um, you know the the production kind of uh, things that go on with with meetings. Yep. Um, I don't know if that. It's an exciting we were, topic. Yeah, we were thinking that there was some good stuff coming. We didn't know how soon related to uh, you know more uh, options for um, multiple cameras and even in a normal Teams meeting versus uh, live events and and whatnot. Yeah, well, um, you know, there, there have been a lot of changes recently. So the Spotlight multiple users, which I think you were just talking about for up to seven is there. Um, there is a feature coming called managed mode. Um, we don't have it on the public roadmap yet, but it's already in um, like the internal Microsoft ring. That managed mode for a meeting will make it so that the only cameras that are seen by anyone in the meeting are the ones that the presenters have spotlighted. Um, I think that'll be appreciated for, for a lot of the um, production value folks who uh, want to make sure that, you know, they only have the cameras up that they want up uh, during a, a public presentation or a board meeting, that kind of stuff. Um, that one's hopefully going to be out before Christmas. Um, current current iteration doesn't seem to have any bugs in it, so it should, should go pretty quick. Um, additionally, features that are on the public roadmap, uh, RTMP out from a meeting. So if you want to stream the basic meeting attendee experience out to a third party place like YouTube, Facebook Live, yada, 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 um, actually out, out to a Teams Live event too, um, over RTMP, uh, that one's on the public roadmap. And I'll throw the link in chat here real quick. Um, I don't remember the date offhand, but it's, it's coming up. There's a lot coming in October and, and November, so I'm having trouble keeping it all straight. Um, RTMP. Uh, that one is on the list for um, for for uh, October, so we may start seeing it roll at the end of the month here. Um, I'll throw that link in chat. Uh, RTMP was one. Uh, there was another uh, big one here. Uh, restarting a live event is coming in October. In fact, it's coming in like a week or two. If you've ever been in a live event before where you had a terrible oops and somebody ended the live event and the live stream is then shut down, um, the ability to restart it is coming. Um, where that was a reason, uh, one of the reasons that some people avoided uh, live events in the past. Um, yeah, it's a big red button. I mean, <laughs> I've had this, luckily it gives you a warning dialog box, but at the beginning it didn't. So I'd be like trying to close a window that's over it and I'd accidentally click twice and then I'd close that window and then click the red button and it would end the live event. And that that was a bad day. Um, For those of you superhero fans, it's the whole concept of group that wanted to press that button in the... Uh... <laughs> okay, I'm getting too geeky here. I'll, I'll, I'll be quiet. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> um, God, there was another, uh, another big one for meetings. Uh, managed mode's coming, RTMP out from a meeting. Um, CART, uh, hopefully by the end of October, CART support will be in Gov. Um, there's a chance it could slip into the first week of November, but it's it's going. And um, the, the latest update from like 8 o'clock last night was that the bug that they had originally run into has been resolved, and they're, they're doing the deployment to commercial right now. And um, within about two weeks after it being done in the commercial, it should be done in, um, in Gov, which puts us the last week of the month, ideally, if nothing goes wrong, if they have to fix anything else, it might might move a week or two into November. Um, Cart is really great for um, as an accessibility feature overall, but especially in any situation where uh, artificial intelligence driven captions aren't going to work well. Um, and while that certainly could be the speaker doesn't have a good microphone, the speaker has a heavy accent or what you're talking about is highly specific jargon with lots of acronyms that that's where like on on my side where it doesn't work well when i start saying cart rtmp da, 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 live captions is going to get those things wrong um, so just like in uh, healthcare or a courtroom uh, you will never get away with just doing a uh, an, an AI driven caption, you're going to have to provide a cart captioner. Um, a lot of the time, technical scenarios will be that that as well, where you're going to need a cart caption to make make it truly be an equitable experience for people who are deaf or hard of hearing. Um, Is there the capability of, of translating 
uh, through that from one language to the next so that the so that not everything is in the same language, but one person is speaking English and the person hears it or reads it uh, in the, in their language, Spanish or whatever it might be. Yeah, so there's a bunch of different ways that that can work um, and that it, all of those ways are being worked on right now. So during a live event, we do offer both live captions, you know, English to English, um, but we also offer live translation in a live event. So like English to Spanish, Vietnamese, Hmong, um, all sorts of languages in a live event. Um, that feature will be coming to Teams meetings uh, winter-ish. They're, it's being actively developed right now. Um, additionally, though, the ability to do multi-channel audio, meaning I speak in English and an interpreter hears that and speaks it in a different language. Um, the ability to do that through third-party apps exists today using apps like uh, Kudo Way or Interprify. Um, th that's when I say today, I don't know, I think it came like a week ago. Um, but if you're doing Teams meetings, um, Ricardo, I don't know if you've got uh, your, your GCC client there, um, go ahead and go to a meeting and hit the, the plus button. One of the meetings apps you should be able to do um, is, is the Kudo uh, app. Uh, and Kudo is a company that contracts for translation services. Their app does also support ASL. Um, so if you hit dot, the dot, 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 no, not uh, not messaging extensions, meeting extensions, dot, 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 add an app. Oh, is it not there? Um, I remember how this works. Sure. <laughs> I actually went to the calendar to do this when I was demoing it yesterday um, and showing that it worked. So I opened up the, the meeting in the calendar and hit the plus button. Would it be? Um, and then just typed kudo. That guy. Click it, but then don't click anything else. No. Um, I want to call out that this this they do like hit play and i hope right away it shows and that they had a screenshot here um click into it a little bit you'll see that they do their little meeting app does support putting another video for an asl interpreter into the context of a team's meeting um, this is a good start what they've offered today um, in the future we want to make this a much better experience uh, and we want it to work better for external people where today meeting extensions don't work great for extent external folks uh, if you're talking about using this for uh, a public facing meeting th this doesn't go all the way to get you to what you need we're building the things to support that in teams so that companies like kudo and interprify can do this much better in the near future and it is a, a very high priority for our, for that engineering team to go and offer that um, this as it exists today will will support you as an employer trying to meet uh, section 508 accommodation requests um, getting that asl interpreter into the meeting context for your employees is a, a great start um, doing it for a public facing event we still have a couple of um, complicated steps you'd need to do to, to make that work really well um, the simple version works okay but not really well Ooh. Um, I have a hard stop. I have to run to a different office hours. So that's everything I could think of off the top of my head. Um, oh, whiteboard app and the uh, office launcher, the desktop apps and the mobile apps work too. So the, the Windows 10 store app for whiteboard, you should be able to sign into that now. The iOS and Android apps should work. Um, yeah. That's started rolling out on Monday. It may or may not be in all tenants yet. Not Monday, on Wednesday, on the 6th. Um, but I do have to run. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think Thanks, we all Nash. do. Thank you guys. Thanks. We'll Absolutely. talk to you later. Bye now. Bye. So yeah, thank you guys for another uh, session here, and uh, we'll be back next week um, to take more more of your questions. Hopefully, this was helpful. So everybody, have a good Friday and a good weekend. Happy Friday! Thank you, everybody. <laughs>